Let's take a look into the world of Drosophila melanogaster. I'm so sick of all of the kids coming to lab and taking me out and getting me drunk. I can't take it anymore. This one guy's always eating yeast. It's weird. So in our parental cross, we had two different phenotypes. And we had our wild type. And this was crossed with our G mutant. And the G mutant was a color pigmentation mutation. Um, compared to the wild type, the G mutants displayed much darker bodies and eye color. Hermagrid cross games. So for our heart cross, we crossed a wild type female and a mutant male, both were homozygous. And we came up in our F1 generation For the F2 Delta Cross, we had four phenotypes. We had wild type, dark eyes, wild type body, wild type eyes with dark body, and dark eyes with dark body. For the wild type phenotype, we had a total of 251 flies with both sexes present. For the dark eyes with wild type body, we had a total of 13 flies, both sexes being present. For the wild type eyes with dark body, we had 18 total flies, and both sexes were present. And for the dark eyes, dark body, we had 21 total flies, and all the sexes were present. So, for our F2 heart cross, we have the same four phenotypes. The wild type phenotype, the dark eyes with wild type body, wild type eyes with dark body, and dark eyes with dark body. For the wild type phenotype, we had a total of uh, 157 flies with both sexes being present. For the dark eyes with wild type body, we had a total of 14 flies with both sexes being present. So, for the wild type eyes with dark body, we had 17 total with both sexes present, and for the dark eyes with dark body, we had 23 present with both sexes present. So obviously our data did not fit in the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, but being scientists, we have to take stuff seriously. So we made a chi-score test. For our delta cross, our expected phenotypic ratios out of 303 flies, which is the amount of flies that we scored, and a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio was 170 flies for wild type, 57 for dark eyes, wild type body, 57 for wild type eyes and dark body, and then 19 for dark eyes and dark body. We then performed a chi squared test as shown in our sigma of observed minus expected squared. And then we put all these bad boys together and got 99.3. Now, if you get 99.3 on any of your data sets in a chi-square test, you should probably just give up what you're doing and then go to find something else. Our degrees of freedom was 3. So looking at our critical values, we are not anywhere close to any of the values in there. 
so we have to reject the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio hypothesis. So for our heart chi-squared test, our expected phenotypic ratios out of 211 flies in a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio would have been 119 wild type flies, 40 dark eyed wild type body flies, 40 wild type eyed dark body flies, and then 13 dark eyed dark body flies. But that's not what our data is, so it didn't match up. And we got a p value of 44.96, which is like not even in the book no matter how hard you look for it. So we rejected our hypothesis of independent assortment again. Sarah, what do you... So according to Drosophila nomenclature, we assigned symbols to each of our alleles. DB plus, meaning wild type. DB, meaning dark body. DE plus meaning wild type, and finally DE meaning dark eyes. These came in handy later on. Okay, so now let's go ahead and recap our parental cross. In this we had our totally homozygous wild type parent, and then we had our totally homozygous mutant parent. Taking these, we got our F1s. And now we see in our F1s, as we said before, we have our heterozygous genotype. All right, so looking at our heterozygote F1, we're gonna go ahead and take the gametes of it, as you see right here. Here we have the wild type gamete, and here we have the mutant gamete. When these are crossed, we get these different F2 possibilities. So in our F2 possibilities, we had our totally homozygote wild type, our two heterozygote wild types, see here and here, and finally, we had our totally homozygote mutant. However, what this failed to do was to show us where we got our recombinants from. Because as in our results, we had two recombinant phenotypes, which were um, wild-type eyes with dark bodies and dark eyes with wild-type bodies. This was explained by linkage. To explain linkage, let's begin by recapping the F1 where we have our heterozygote. I've drawn it again here, only this time showing it in prophase 1 of meiosis, after the S phase, where the chromosomes have duplicated, and the analogous chromosome pair is lined up against it. Here, we see that crossing over is capable of occurring because of the closeness of the two, two recombinant strands, the ones in the middle. Next, we'll see the crossing over. Here we see crossing over occurring between the recombinant strands. Here we see that crossing over has occurred and new chromosome combinations are made. In the middle we see our two recombinants. Taking the gametes from these, we see these possibilities. Where we see our totally wild type up at the top. And next we see our dark body with wild type eyes. Next, we see our wild type body with dark eyes. And finally, we see our totally mutant chromosome. Crossing all of these gametes shows these F2 possibilities. Here we can see the F2 possibilities that arise from the crossing over in prophase 1 of the F1 generation. On the left, we see all wild type, pheno all wild type genotypes. These are all either homozygotes or heterozygotes that give rise to a wild-type phenotype. In the middle, we see dark body with wild-type eyes. On the bottom, we see wild-type body with dark eyes. And on the right, we see dark body with dark eyes. As you can see, the wild-type had more possibilities in terms of genotypes. The dark body and wild-type eyes only had two possibilities the wild type body with dark eyes only had two possibilities, and the dark body with dark eyes only had one possibility. However, you may recall that under normal conditions, we had another dark body with dark eyes. Therefore, we saw our 13 to 1 
to 1 to 1, and our 12 to 1 to 1 to 2 ratios. Oh, hey. So basically what we found out was that our recombination frequency for the delta cross was a 10.23%. I like that. And for our heart recombination frequency, we got a 14.69%. I like that too. So we found out that a 1% equals 1 centimorgan. And what does 1 centimorgan equal? Well, 1 centimorgan is 1 mapping unit. So we believe that these genes are these genes are maybe like 14.7 mapping units apart. And possibilities of differences in combination frequency, it may have been due to systematic error or double crossover.